backyard machine shop. Well, today I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to compare this marble hacksaw, this 1940-something, I'm guessing, marble hacksaw, with this 19 or 2010 era uh, Harbor Freight bandsaw. Now, this bandsaw is what I've been using for the last six, seven years, and it served me well. It's slow, and um, you have to keep it adjusted. A few other things you have to do to it, and it's, if you look at it, it's starting to fall apart. Anyway, I wanted to compare it to to uh, the Marvel hacksaw. Now I know that, like I said, this is an apples to apples comparison. This saw um, I found in the catalog, a 1946 catalog, and in 1946 this saw cost $200 or $250. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll take a picture of the catalog uh, ad and show you. Anyway, $256 in 1946, I think is equal to, I did a, a uh, inflation calculator and it's equal to like $3,000 today. So, like I said, not apples to apples. This thing costs $250 new today. So, uh, it's really light compared to this. This one comes in, it, the catalog says 450 pounds. I'm guessing 300 maybe with everything on it. And, it and it may have weighed 450 at some point with a base or something I don't know but I doubt it weighs that now I can I actually picked up I don't know it may I, I can pick up the base without the arm without the motor and it was all I can do to pick it up and set it on the floor so it you know no vice either so it may it may with all together may weigh 400 pounds but I, I don't think so uh, this saw weighs maybe 100 pounds. I mean, it's, it's quite a comparison, so, or quite a difference. Um, so what we're going to do, and here's how we're going to conduct a little test, is I've got four items here. I've got some half inch, uh, three or four stainless. I've got some uh, two and a half inch ID uh, welded seam pipe. You know, this is, I'm trying to do things that we all have around our shop that we might would use. I'm trying to give you a comparison of what it does. And like I said, I'm not trying to race with these two machines. I just want to show you the difference. I've got some uh, an inch and a half or inch and a quarter angle iron, and I got some one by two uh, bar stop. Okay. So again, like my my intentions are not to say, hey, you know, this thing's so much better than Harbor Freight saw. But what I want to do is I want to show people out there that if you can find one of these saws laying in a field somewhere, you remember where this one came from? It, it was sitting in a field for 30 or 40 years, and I took it and I wire wheeled it, I lubricated it, I replaced a couple things on it, and um, and this is where we're sitting at. And this saw, I bought it brand new. It's got a relatively new blade on it. I think both of them got 10 TPI blades. Um, both of them about the same amount of cut time on them. So we're gonna compare them. And what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for speed. Second, we're gonna look for accuracy in other words when you cut it how square is the cut and how good a finish it has now this saw i've got it set really light it's going to take a light cut it can take a lot more cut than what it shows but i got it set up to make a pretty good finish cut and the same with in this saw i've got it completely opposite i've got all the tension off of it so it's going to cut as fast as it can cut and um and, and we'll see what the difference is okay so let me load up the saw and I'm going to adjust the cameras to where we can get a little better view and uh, we'll start cutting. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a little bit of a, a detail of the saw and um, I hope it's going to come out all right. I didn't do that in the last video and I wanted to kind of, kind of uh, start out by doing this. Well, to start with, here's the motor I installed. Uh, I think it's a three-quarter horse. I can't remember. It's a, it's on there somewhere. We can take a picture, maybe see it. But a three-quarter horse, where the other one was a half. So we got a little more power. Um, we got the, the uh, gearbox filled up with oil, like it should have been. It runs a lot quieter now. Um, we put some 90-weight gear oil in there. All right, back here in the back, there's a place for oil. And what you do, I need to cut a piece of felt, and put it here, but. This oils the shaft, and then inside the shaft, it's got a it's got a, uh, a position in there. When it comes around, it grabs a little oil and sends it through the shaft. And if I ain't mistaken, it that also lubricates this cam, this eccentric. 
and because um, it comes through and leaks out. Okay, uh, up here on the the uh, the um, shaft up here, we have two clamps with two bearings, and we have felt inside here. And this is how we lubricate the shaft. So we just keep it full. Okay, we have a a uh, a wedge here, and I'll show this while it's running. This wedge uh, works itself out as this thing's articulating. It uh, it actually works itself out, and that's what helps lower the uh, the salt. All right. So the next thing we have we have on that eccentric on that cam we have this arm, and as that thing comes around, it puts tension here in the spring. Well, when it puts that tension in the spring, it transfers tension back up all the way up back to this arm right here okay well that arm pulls down and that's what gives pressure on the saw for it to cut so as that, that eccentric comes around that spring pushes it it pulls down on the saw and actually the saw cuts on the back stroke okay like I said we got a little vise uh, this isn't the original vise but it's the original type the original vise would be a little longer and this all been brazed in a couple places. It's brazed right here and brazed right here. And I think the main reason it's done that way is these things are real tippy. If you notice, I got I got wood downriggers on them to keep them from tipping over. And uh, that's something that has to be done. Uh, this handle here is broke. I have another one of these. I haven't put it on yet. Um, other than that, the saw the saw runs really good now. I made a few adjustments. The only thing I had to do to it was uh, this pin I replaced and I replaced this pin. I replaced both of them uh, and the motor. So there's where we at. All right. Um, the half inch stock here. We won't, and we're just going to cut a little bit off of it. All right. And so we're cutting about a half inch off. Put one in this saw. So the first thing we're going to cut, we're going to cut the half inch stainless. And uh, really and truly half inch stainless, I would usually just use a hand hacksaw. But we're going to start out with that and see how good and square it cuts. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to get this saw here started. And uh, like I said, I'm not worried about the time so much. Okay. Um, just make sure they both run it. All right. And okay. So we're gonna cut this no lubrication, and we will cut this no lubrication. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the uh, marble saw, and I'll and I'll hold the uh, Harbor Freight saw. And when it when it gets time when it starts cutting, I'll drop it down on it. All right. So here we go.
the heart of pretty soft. And this should drop and set itself off too. I, I usually keep the setup to do that. All right. So, got both of them done in uh, maybe 30 seconds longer on the Harbor Freight Saw. And that's not too bad, but like I said, normally with half inch material, I'll end up cutting uh, by hand. So I probably could have cut one by hand just as fast as, as they could. All right, guys, so what we got loaded up now is some inch and a half by eighth inch angle. And uh, we're going to see how fast it cuts now. We're going to compare all these afterwards, so I've got them marked and sitting over there on the bench where we can look at them. Uh, I wasn't impressed with the, the stainless cut. I've seen them cut better, but that cut wasn't that great. So here we go. Same thing. We're going to start this saw. Okay. We're going to start this saw, and then I'm going to hold this one until it's ready. Turn them off for a second. 